and the song was Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And it says, if Jesus, and we know he's coming, he's not running, he's walking. And the reason he's walking is because we have not been obedient. And he's just holding back. But we need to get ready to meet our maker. Can you say amen? Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Man. Are you ready for the word tonight? Yes, yes. Bring Glory. It. Mm. Bring it. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel him all the time. Yeah. If I did not feel the Holy Ghost, I would just quit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm believing God that we're going to get some lights in the church to light things up. Because when the lights are dim, it reminds me of shallow in the days of Eli, Eli the priest. The Bible said that, that the lights that went out, they, the lights went out in the temple. But the man of God, he could sleep. Although God's light is out. But then I found out something else about Eli. He was losing his eyesight. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So the temple, the lights in the temple was out and it didn't bother him because he was, he was blind. <clears throat> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And that, that exhortation that Lisa gave tonight, I think it was on time. Glory to God. Most folks think about their house, their responsibility, and they forget about God. They don't tell nobody about God. There's two sisters that are here tonight. My first time ever seeing them. And they told me, Reverend Linda told her, told them to come to church. Yeah. Now, just think, if the people that has been going to this church for years. If they could just tell one person to come to church, mm -hmm. there would be no room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Jesus said something about 2,000 years ago, and he said, if you be ashamed of me, uh -oh. I'm going to be ashamed of you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, I just feel God. I'm going to start my message off tonight. And John chapter 12. But tonight I'm going to be speaking on, speaking about Abraham. John chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. It goes something like this. Now is the judgment of this world. God is judging this world. When we look at what is going on in the political field, a man told me a few days ago, he said, all Democrats is going to hell. I said, brother, how could you say that? I said, how could you say all Democrats are going to hell? I said, do you know that most Democrats and most Republicans don't, don't really understand the platform? Hallelujah. Yeah. And I said, God will forgive a person for being ignorant. Mm -hmm. And so he goes, 
sit in Moses' seat and said, all Democrats <laughs> is going to go to hell. I wanted to tell them, you're going to beat them there. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus said, now, now the judgment of this world, now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And he said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto him. Hallelujah. Why is it that we all lift up Jesus? Why is it that it's more important to talk about a political meeting or something that is non-essential yeah. than to talk about Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, folks will go miles and miles to invite people to come to church to eat something. They will set aside all different things just to prepare for a meal at the church. But Jesus said, if I be lifted up, why is it that folks is not lifting up Jesus? What you say, sister? Sister said they are lost. I'm not going to say they are lost, but I can tell you something. If they don't get it right, they're going to wake up in eternity separated from God. Hallelujah. Now let's turn to the book of Galatians chapter 3. I wish I had the opportunity. No, uh, I wish I had the opportunity to teach God's word. But I don't have the opportunity. Hallelujah. I wish I could just two or three times a week. Just open up God's word to people and let them understand God. Look at that Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Now, this is a very important message that I'm going to bring forth tonight. You might not shout, you might not laugh, but Jesus said you should know the truth and that truth will make you free. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Verse 13 says, Christ, who is Christ? Jesus, our Savior, Redeemer. Jesus is the Christ. He said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. Now, what is the curse of the law? Matter of fact, this week, I got a little upset. I started to start to do some cursing. But the Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What is the curse of the law? First, number one, is spiritual death. When Adam and Eve 
obey Satan. They died spiritually. I didn't say they died physically. Spiritually. See, a lot of folks today get to see because they don't have sugar diabetes or heart trouble or kidney trouble. They think they're all right. Adam didn't have none of those things, but the Bible said he was dead. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just because a person brag about their good health, it doesn't mean that they are not dead. Amen. To not have fellowship with God. You are dead although you are physically alive. So the, the scripture said Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Thank you, Jesus. The first one I said was hey, spiritual. He don't mind it. Death. He don't mind it. How many church he members it. come to church every he Sunday, but they are he not Christians? It. Hallelujah. They have no love for God in their heart. And a lot of times the leadership don't care as long as they can get money out of it. Hallelujah. Sort of like an undertaker. An undertaker gets his money from people that have died. And a lot of churches and pastors get money from people who because they are dead. Hallelujah. They don't have the love to try to resuscitate a person. Mm -hmm. Hell mm. is real. But we that are Christians, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. So number one is spiritual death. Number two, poverty. Poverty. People in the church, Christian people, some of them are suffering financially. They are living from one paycheck to the next. Most of them have more days in a month than they have money in their purse. <laughs> True. And the reason for that is because no one is telling them that Christ has redeemed them. Mm -hmm. Most folks don't know that they are children of Almighty God. Yes. You see, I'm a member of Pembroke Church. I'm a member of Adobe Christian Center. I'm a member of this cathedral, of that cathedral. What they don't realize, they are not in Christ. Yeah. Not being in Christ and not knowing that you're in Christ, you're living in power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of folks have a poverty spirit. Meaning that they never experienced the presence of God. Hallelujah. Because if people experience the presence of God, you know what they're going to want to do? They don't want to want more of that. Yeah. Hallelujah. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. As the 
Selisa was saying. No wonder people are having a hard time because God blows on their blessings. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Instead of them re receiving, it seems like their blessing is just like a bird. It just flies away. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. And Pharaoh like it that way. Mm. Pharaoh is the type of a person that like the whole people as prisoners yeah. and use them yeah. for his own advantage. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pharaoh used God's people to build them a nice home. Treasure seed. Chariots. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of folks that are in leadership, that's what they are doing. They are using God's people to enrich them. Mm -hmm. Because God's people haven't realized they have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Death in the Bible, it doesn't necessarily always mean physical death. Because I believe Adam, after he was pronounced dead, in the physical, he lived nine. Hundred and thirty years. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. How long are you going to live without God in your life? How long? Hallelujah. How long are you going to show on God? Looking at the things of this world. As Robert and Cunningham priest, when are you going to seek the face of God? Yeah. Hallelujah. We like to seek each other's face. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're always ready for entertainment and a good party. <laughs> Hallelujah. We will shut the church door just to party. <laughs> tell you something. There was a preacher in East Texas. He stood up one Sunday morning behind his pulpit and lightning hit his pulpit wow. and split it in half. Then he realized that could have been me. <laughs> he said, God could have killed me. And he stood before his people. And he said, I've been lying to you. I've been, I haven't been the pastor that I should have been. And he said, we all need to repent. Yeah. Even myself. Amen. And revival broke out. Yeah. At that church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. And I did things as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish thing. Hallelujah. Now I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't care what you're going through. My Holy Ghost, which is my friend, it's going to touch you. Yes. It's going to lift you. It's going to raise you up. Yes. Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. The scripture says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. 
Another curse of the law is sickness. Hallelujah. Sickness. Before Adam sinned, there was no sickness in the world. Hallelujah. So Christ has redeemed us from sickness. Hallelujah. Why? We don't see a lot of people delivered from sickness in the church. Why don't we? Well, the reason people are sick in church is because some of us get paid for visiting the sick. <laughs> Hallelujah. If there was nobody sick, I'd lose my job. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it looked good on the itinerary saying, I visit the sick in the hospital. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yes. Know them with all in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. There's no law to raise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Most of our church leaders are just like Samson when he got his hair cut off. Samson lost the power. He didn't realize that God had left him. Hallelujah. Yes. Baby, your thing came loose. All right. Hallelujah. Samson didn't realize. that God had departed from him. He didn't realize until the devil started beating him and put his eyes out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sickness is a curse. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And when we realize that sickness is a curse. We ain't going to put up with it. We got to cry out to God and say, God, deliver me from this curse. Amen. Yeah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Say, God, your word said, whom the Son may free mm -hmm. is free indeed. Amen. God, I want to be free. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Instead of people hating sickness, what we do, we send them flowers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. But we need to teach people that sickness is of the devil. Yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory be to God. Yes. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. The scripture says, being made a curse for us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. When Jesus was put on the cross, he took on our spiritual death, our poverty, and our sickness. Hallelujah. He was made a curse for us. Hallelujah. And this is why Jesus said, no one come to the Father but through me. Hallelujah. You don't have to carry the curse around. Jesus was made a curse for you. God so loved you so much that he gave his son Jesus to bear your curse. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Pilate said to the Jews of his day, he said, what are you going to do with this Jesus whom they call Christ? What are you going to do with Jesus, whom they call Christ? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And you're just going to continue to wallow in your misery. Thank God for your cancer. Oh, I thank God I got my cancer. Thank God for my sugar. Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you something. Jesus was cursed for you. Glory. Do you know Jesus was cursed for you? Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm here to tell you. Hell is enlarging itself. <laughs> and the reason hell is enlarging itself is because our leaders are not telling people that Christ took their curse. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They accept Jesus just like they accept Buddha. Mm -hmm. Now, Buddha was a nice man. Muhammad was a nice man. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah.
Before they die, they think they're going to go to heaven. But once they die, then demons come, and have, come after them. Mm. And they are ashamed. They blew it. Yeah. How many folks mm. are blowing it? Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Life is too short. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Jim is 90 some years old, but every time the church don't open, Jim is in church. <laughs> Why? Jim said, I might be 91, but life is short. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. Life. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If I was a freak when it came to be a preacher, I would quit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because I know that God is real. Yeah. Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gain the world and lose his own soul in hell? What good is that retirement going to do you when you're going to go to hell? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What good is it? Instead of dedicating yourself to God, you have dedicated yourself to your children, and your children die and go to hell. Because you didn't teach them the fear of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, let me get back into the word. Thank you, Lord. The scripture says, verse 14, that the blessings of Abraham might come. What are the blessings of Abraham. Well, let me ask you another question. Who is Abraham? Do anyone know who Abraham is? Hallelujah. Let's turn to Romans chapter 4. We're going to see who Abraham is. Thank you. Thank you. I'm in Corinthians. <laughs> the scripture says, Romans 4 and verse 16. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, the father of us all. Did you know Abraham was your father? Yeah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. We all know that my, my daddy's name is Freddie Bowsley, but did you know when you became a Christian, God gave you a father hmm. and this earth? And he's Abraham. Hmm. Hallelujah. Abraham is our spiritual father. Amen. And because Abraham is our spiritual father, any good father, if he can, will leave an inheritance for his children. 
Hallelujah. Let us turn to Genesis chapter 12. Oh, I feel God. I feel God. I, I feel some liberating. Thank you, Lord. I've told Vilma before, and I, I, and I believe it. Uh, I don't know when it's going to happen. But God told me, I believe, not unless I miss God. I don't think I missed him. He says, son, you're going to be preaching that word, and people are going to get so upset. They're going to come gunning with you with a gun. Oh. And he said, you'll be just like Abraham Lincoln. Bob Luther King, John F. Kennedy. He said, because men's they hate a man that preach God's word and they want him dead. Their preachers will not let me preach in their church because when I preach, God stirred them up. And they said, we won't let you preach no more. Yeah. Hallelujah. No, they was a demon. No demon in them. They was, they was an antichrist spirit. Look at that Genesis 12. Verse 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abram. Evidently God had been speaking to him before. And he did not move. And this is why the scripture said, Now, now, the Lord has said unto Abram. The Lord had, had already said it. But God said to him, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindreds, and from thy father's house, unto the land. I'll show thee. And I'll make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shall be a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the blessing of Abraham is this. God said he want to bless you. And make you a blessing. Not a curse. Not a welfare recipient. Abraham is our father. And God told Abraham. If you would just get away from around the folks. That you've been hanging out with. Get away from them. He said, I bless you. And I will make you a blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when a person is real blessed, you can't make a slave out of them. This is why folks don't want God's people to know they are blessed. They love to enslave you. And take advantage of you. God said. To Abraham. I'm going to bless you. And make. You a blessing. And I close. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Hallelujah. And these are. Abraham blessings to God's people. It says, as Lisa was teaching on obedience, it said, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken to obey God's word diligently. A hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. 
that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. What God is saying, if you obey him, God said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to lift you up. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm going to lift you up. God said, Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. So, what God is saying, that if we obey his word, it doesn't matter where you live. You can live in Pengrove. Or Forestville. Or Bakersfield. <laughs> God said, I'll bless you in the city and I'll bless you in the country. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot dodge God's blessing once you start honoring God and know what Jesus has done for you. Yes. Hallelujah. I feel, Vilma, that God is telling me he's getting ready to there's getting ready to be some funerals. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. God is saying he is tired of being played with. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. George Bueller, one of the greatest uh, missionaries in the world, he said he became a, a clergyman because it paid good. Hallelujah. No call. Hallelujah. No call from God. His family encouraged him to become a clergy. His mom and dad said, you'll be able to take care of us when you get old. Hallelujah. But in the midst of his deception, God saved him. Hallelujah. And he became one of the greatest fathers of orphans that the world has ever known. He would take care of at least 2,000 little babies and little children, and he received no money from no church. Hallelujah. He got on his knees and he prayed. And God blessed him with millions and millions of dollars. I talked to a missionary once. She said, my ministry is in Africa. I said, can I ask you a question? At night, do you sleep in the bushes? She said, no. I got me an apartment. I go home every night and take me a good shower. Do you know something? We make whips out of missionaries. Hallelujah. Because if God has called you, Paul said, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I used to hate to see missionaries come to church because you know what? That was more offering basket going to be passed around. Hallelujah. And they said, they got the faith of God. They don't have the faith of God. They have the faith of those hands that is feeding them. Hallelujah. Just like a good dog, he going to bite the hands of feed it. I'm not worried about it. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I feel God. Don't shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shoot me. Hallelujah. I've had, I've had folks. Matter of fact, this is the honest truth. I was shot at once wow. with an Uzi. Hallelujah. I said, God, what? Other preachers are not being persecuted. God said, they ain't even preaching. Uh, 
Hallelujah. So I Diane, that make me feel like going to quit. Yeah, there it is. Hey! I'm going to quit now. Hallelujah. Thank God. Jim was laughing back there for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Didn't I tell you Jesus said the truth will make you free? Yeah. Huh? Yes. And David said in his presence, this fullness of joy. Yes. Hallelujah. To oh, anyone tonight, I didn't finish my message. Really, I didn't preach my message. Hallelujah. But I did preach God. And if you want to get upset, you get upset at God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Would anyone need prayer tonight? I'd like to pray for you. There's nothing wrong and receiving prayer. Someone pray for you. You know, because they tell me the war between the North and the South, it took a long time for some of those Confederates to realize that the war was over. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But you know what? The war is over. God is not angry at you anymore. Hallelujah. God loves everybody. Whether you're a murderer, an adulterer, hallelujah. It doesn't matter. So love one another. Yes. Hallelujah. And anyone need prayer. Come on down. And let me pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
from the curse. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, the real is faithful. Father,